This, this, this is God Stories Radio Podcast. God Stories Radio with Fritz, Mike, and Tina. Welcome, everyone, to this edition of God Stories Radio. This is session 270. I'm Fritz. I'm Mike. And I'm Tina. What is going on, guys? It is Thursday Thursday night. Thursday night. What a beautiful day it was today. Yes, it was. Man, I'm telling you what. 70 degrees, sunny. It was cold when I got up, man. Oh, it was. It was cold. I I went out in faith. I put my shorts on. (laughs) You know, I've got an under 50 rule. You know, if uh, if it's under 50, I don't do the shorts. It was like 45. Well, you yeah. 47, I think it was when I looked. It was close. It was. It was too close to call. Mm-hmm. Shorts it was. <laughs> and I'm glad I made that decision. <laughs> I'd say you got lucky on that one. All uh, right. Okay. <laughs> Luck it is. <laughs> I'm going to start with you, babe. What's going on over there? Oh, just staying busy. You know, I'm just trying to squeeze every minute out of every day. So... Just doing the best I can to keep afloat and uh, ride the wave, as Mikey says. Uh, we got some wave riders <laughs> over, there, over there tonight. Right uh-huh. now, I think I'm doing the doggy paddle rather than live riding the wave. <laughs> Donnie Seeger, welcome to the show, buddy. Welcome to the show. You dialed into a good one tonight. Mm-hmm. All right, Mike, what's going on? Well, this week... um. As I was calling it a kind of a, a, the third, I'm thinking about the third season. I'm calling it a season. I'm starting to see again, one, 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 one. And it just kept on coming up during the week. And so I did some research and I did like I did last time, but this time I actually wrote the stuff down and started to meditate on it and everything else. Um, I don't know. It's, uh, uh, looking it up, it says, God is trying to speak to you. Uh, a wake up call in spiritual awakening. It is a sign God is calling you. It's a transition. A period of big changes are coming to you and you will have to awaken a spiritual sense, a wake up call that will receive direct from God. That's what I got. So which way it's going to go? I do not know, but I think this is like the third season as i say it's happened like three times where i started to see this one 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 everywhere mm-hmm. mikey tends to talk in parables mm-hmm. i wish he'd get a burning bush once in a while so he could tell us what's going on i would like to too i can't uh i can't uh we're gonna have to get joseph that's gonna have to be his next book he's life gonna, in parables he's gonna have to inter- interpolate <laughs> mikey's uh situation every week <laughs> All right. Well, uh, if someone can help me on that. Just let me know. Please yeah. do. Uh, any new countries, any new likes? Yes. Uh, we want to say thank you to Sharon Tedford for liking us on Facebook. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Sharon. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Welcome to the GSR yes. family. Yes. And we also had another Facebook like. Um, this person was actually a guest back in uh, October of 2018. <laughs> We Just want for to, you, babe. <laughs> we want to say thank you to Caitlin Sahad. She was session 180. Uh, I think it was titled, You're Never Going to Let Me Down. So thank That's you, awesome. Caitlin. Thank you, Caitlin. Welcome to the GSR thank family. You. Yes. Anybody else out there that has not liked us yet on Facebook, please do so. So you can we can welcome you in and you can be part of the GSR family. Amen to that. All right. Who do we got, babe? No further ado. Well, um, we have another contact from Miss Tracy Fagan. So love we love that lady. I yes. know she's, she's amazing, awesome. and I owe her a phone call because she was texting me today, and I haven't had an opportunity to to reach out to her. But um, 
Tracy, if you're listening, I will reach out to you as soon as I can, dear. Um, but this gentleman is actually a friend of Tracy's and he contacted the show, uh, through email at godstoriesradio at gmail.com. And he let us know that he was interested in becoming a guest. And he's actually, uh, what I'd call a Christian entrepreneur and he loves to mentor. He's written a couple of books. So he's a published author. He's a husband. He calls himself a business geek and a readaholic. Um, <laughs> but he's actually very, very skilled and talented. He's a former U.S. aircraft uh, maintenance officer, and he has a BA in history from Weber State, as well as an MA in administration. So without any further ado, I'd like to welcome Mr. Kevin Cullis to the show. Welcome, Kevin, welcome Kevin. to the show. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you for right. actually, you didn't have to say yes. You actually contacted us first. Yeah. Yeah. So, but thanks guys for inviting me and inviting me into your home and your radio show and, and stuff. And I'm looking forward to sharing all the stuff that uh, God has downloaded to me and I'm going to share as much as possible within the time we have allotted. Fantastic. So, thanks for inviting me. It's always great to have a fellow radio there you personality. Go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love He's it. got that great and, voice. And, too. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can I, tell right when off. I, when I did my own radio a uh, couple of sit-ins with it, I said, I'm just not a pretty voice, you know, so uh, I'm, uh, I'm pretty good. <laughs> We have faces so, for radio, yes. so we, we're yes. in the right uh, profession. <laughs> right, 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 right. So yeah, it's uh, I'm excited uh, to to share what uh, where as as we say in the startup industry, where God has pivoted me uh, in the direction uh, that if you had told me ten, fifteen years ago I'd be sitting here doing what I'm doing, I never would have thought about it. Uh, but it's been rather fascinating. Uh, the it. it I sort of liken it to you, you come up to a door and you knock on the door and Jesus says, okay, open up and you open up the door and there's a small uh, little bit of blessings in this one room and you, oh, I'll take those blessings. And then you see there's three more doors in front of you. And so, well, which do I know? Well, pick which one. So you pick this one and, oh, you open that door. There's a lot more blessings than that one. Oh, I'll take those blessings. And, and then you go, oh, oh, there's another door. Well, there's more blessing there. So it's like every time I turn around, there's more and more blessings that I am encountering uh, in God's word regarding uh, business and entrepreneurship and stuff like that. So it's been, it's a fascinating and eye-opening and exciting time for me. That's great. That's awesome. Well, take Absolutely. us take us to the beginning, kind of walk us through a little bit about you and then uh, you can kind of lead into your testimony from there. Okay. All right. Um, I was uh, born at an early age, but I'm bummed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, my, I grew up in uh, Vienna, Virginia. Uh, my dad was in work for the Voice of America, radio and television. And uh, he, he actually went to school for those who are old enough to remember Willard Scott on the MEC News. Oh, uh, yeah. MEC yeah. Weatherman. You betcha. Yeah. Yeah. He went to school with him. Uh, so we knew Willard Scott enough. Uh, we moved to Denver here when I was in seventh grade, uh, graduated from high school, uh, went, I didn't want to go to college right away. So I went in the air force, enlisted, uh, became an aircraft mechanic and then, uh, worked on F four D's and RF four C's, spent two years in England, came back to Utah where I was first stationed and, uh, worked on F 16s, uh, oh. got out. Started college at Weber State University. Actually, it was Weber State College at the time, but Weber Univers State University now. And, Sorry for uh, pronouncing that wrong. Oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> you're, you're not. You're outside of Utah, so everybody does the same thing. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, ended up. Uh, I uh, uh, attended a church there where the uh, pastor would spend about three years going through the Book of Ephesians. Uh, <laughs> wow. Word. Word by word, wow. letter by letter, you know, getting into the Greek and Hebrew and history of that. And so at the time, I said, well, I want to go into the history. So I got a BA in history. And right at the time, at 83, is uh, Ronald Reagan came in and was in the military. So I entered through ROTC, went back in as an officer, uh, became an aircraft maintenance officer, uh, was worked on F-11Ds at Cannon Air Force Base in Mexico, and then uh, spent uh, three years over in Germany from 87 to 90 
Uh, I work on the F-15 or F-15 C's and D's. And right when the wall fell, too. Uh, wow. I was there when the Berlin Wall fell. So that, that dates me a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so I, I saw the fall of the wall and then I left <laughs> Germany. Uh, my wife and I left Germany. Uh, oh, I got married just before I went in the service. So she's come along with me. So if I don't mention her, she's with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, then uh, moved to Wurtsmouth Air Force Base in Michigan. Uh, worked on B-52s and KC-135s. Um, and at the time I was involved with, with at the time, and this is the early 90s, uh, total quality management, which is an approach to how do you improve you know, your business, uh, how do you get people engaged, et cetera. And so I became the wing representative for that of how to, how to save the taxpayer money by being more productive. Uh, and I was <laughs> drinking from a fire hose learning that. Uh, and I decided they, they were cutting down the Air Force or the military. So I decided to leave. Uh, I left, um, uh, and then we moved here in 93. Uh, I just finished up my master's. I, my master's thesis was on process improvement. I came out here and I crashed. And when I say mm. crashed is what most military people do is they grieve. And I didn't mm. realize that, you know, like most guys don't talk about it, but, uh, I, I did, I didn't do drugs or alcohol, but I was angry, you know, frustrated. Um, and so I started selling computers, uh, and then ended up working, uh, for Apple for three years from 2005, 2008. And right at the time I was doing that, I said, you know what? I don't think I'm going to go far with Apple, even though I was the number one salesman. Uh, I said, let me start doing something. So I said, I'm going to start writing. You know, I'm, I'm seeing all these problems. I'm very analytical. I like to solve problems. So I sat there and I said, okay, let me, let me write these problems down with the computers. And so I left Apple and, uh, I literally finished up my first book called How to Start a Business Mac Version. Because at the time, everybody was saying, well, if you do business, get a PC, but if you do graphics, get a Mac. And I went, no. And I was, I was selling to businesses every day. So I was showing people how to use the Mac in business. I've had that conversation with many people. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. (laughs) Uh, They were subhuman if they use PC, you know. (laughs) <laughs> and, and the interesting thing is I run Linux, Mac, and Windows, and that's why I'm balding. I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I pulled my hair out doing all three of them, right? So, Did, did you ever have any so, A10 Warthog time? No, sir, I did not. But uh, I, I really like the A10. Uh, how uh, can you not? Of, what a bird. Can, uh, yeah, and, and the, it's the only aircraft in the Air Force inventory that gets the bird strike from the rear because you know, it's so slow. <laughs> You know, doesn't go very fast. And the birds are faster than it, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, the, the bird sound is always a, a reminder that uh, how close they are. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, then I uh, got out and uh, suffered a, a loss of employment and had to move in with my father. My mother had passed away. Uh, and it's like, oh, I'm, I'm in a world of hurting. Uh, I was... I was motivationally, emotionally, everything sucking fumes in terms of trying to do things and get things done. And that'll come on, come later on. And so, uh, the bottom line, my dad ended up selling his house. So we had to move out. Uh, I started a job and it didn't work, work very well. And literally my father got out in December and because of his prostate cancer, it migrated outside of his bo- uh, elsewhere, it does liver, et cetera. And, and they said, okay, you don't have but a few months to live. And so literally when he left to move into a retirement home, that's when we moved out and that's when we had to sell his house. So literally the day Friday we closed on his house, Saturday after that he passed away. That's and so sad. So, yeah. And, you know, for those of us, you know, I, I as, as I just recently found, somebody says, when your first parent dies, it's a comma. When your last parent dies, it's a period. Mm-hmm. And it felt like that because I felt like I lost my anchor, you know? Um, and so uh, it was a little bit of a struggle. Mm-hmm. But the interesting thing, God uses that. And uh, I connected with a friend of mine. Um, 
Uh, his name is Jimmy Graham out here in Castle Rock. Uh, he's a former Navy SEAL. Uh, and I connected with him because I rewrote my uh, second, I uh, actually wrote my first chapters of my How to Start a Business Mac version because I found out that being a veteran, um, has a very similar mindset of being an entrepreneur. So I rewrote the first chapter to saying your mindset is really important. I connected with Jimmy in October 2013, and he says, we need to have coffee. I said, okay, great. So we had coffee in November and December. What I thought was about 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes of time was two and three hours of talking two and three times a month. And in December, I said, Wait a minute. If I'm having difficulty discussing, you know, selling my book and you're having discussing, you know, increasing your business, how come we're not going to see our pastor? How come we don't ask him? And then I went, I've been a Christian since age 14. I've never heard a sermon about business and faith. And so, uh, of course, uh, my father had inheritance. So I said, I'm five minutes from Denver Seminary. So let me go do some research. So in January, I started to do research. And if I could give a number just as a perspective, in the secular world, zero to a thousand is how much content there is for business in the marketplace. In the Christian world, it's five. Hmm. And I just went, wow. And I said, and there's a, 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 a dean of business did, did some literature research, and that's what he found. He says, then he's asked the, the, the business section, he says, I don't see any difference between the curriculum down, the, down the, the road from the secular university versus ours. There's no difference. Why is that? And I said, well, yeah, why is that? So they rewrote their curriculum, which basically sparked me saying, yeah, how come I don't see that? So I literally started doing research and I found out all this information. Uh, and give you the biggest thing. I'm going to ask you guys, in the parable of the talents, does anybody know how much the talent was worth? Does anybody on the on the panel here have know how much the talent was worth? Mm. No. I thought no. I looked it up. Judging it by our silence, something. we're not... Uh, <laughs> uh, we do well, not have what? an answer. Yeah, well, yeah, 99% of the time people ask. So I got a sound I, effect for that. <laughs> silence. Um, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so I used to getting words for words. So I looked up Parable of the Talent. And if you go to blue letter, blue letter, um, bible.org, um, look under talent and you'll find Strong's G5007. Under the note there, it says the talent was up to 200 pounds of gold or silver. Wow. That's a lot. 200 pounds. And I did a rough, cal- in a rough calculation at $1,800 an ounce. That meant one slave got five talents worth $28 million. He doubled it and then was promoted. Mm-hmm. And that took the shackles off my my brain mm. and my jaw hit the floor. I'm going, holy smokes. Yeah, that, is a, never, that is a jaw dropper. Yeah. And I went, wait a minute. And that's like, okay, what else am I missing? You know, from the Bible, what else have we either glossed over or, or completely ignored or have been focused on one area that we've missed this piece? A lot. So that, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So that started me down the road, and that's where my second book is called HWJDB, How Would Jesus Do Business? And that's when I, with my history background, I literally went and found out, okay, if Jesus lived during the first century, what would it have been like for him working? Um, you know, what did he, what did he guide his business? Because that's what I'm looking for. I'm a one book author, but how do I run my business? How should I run my business from mm-hmm. a biblical perspective? So I basically uh, found out that from Jesus' perspective, from age 6 to age 12, um, he went to Torah school. And then from 12 to 20, um, he apprenticed in his, his, uh, 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 his father Joseph's business, which was in, in our parlance, he would be a general contractor. He's, while we use the word carpenter, the Greek word is tekton, which is a technologist. 
But the amount of resources that are in Galilee around Sepphoris, where is probably he was working, stone was the major uh, resource. So he pro- and there was major building going on in Sepphoris, and so he was in most cases a stone mason. Now he probably worked with wood and metal, you know, the, like latches and things like that. But mm-hmm. stone would stone would have been his primary means of building. And so, and then I'm going okay. So from Age 12 to 20, he apprenticed, and 12 to 30, he successfully ran and properly ran a general contracting business. And then he started his ministry. That means his ministry was three years. His business experience was 18 years. Mm-hmm. And I went, when was the last time I heard a sermon about 18 years of Jesus being in business? Well, usually, uh, usually you hear people say that... Uh, there's nothing known about Jesus in between those years, but from 12 to 30. Correct. But you can, based on the history and the archaeology of the time, you can basically extract from it, this is, may have been what he did then. Uh, like, for instance, the amount of resources that were available then. Uh, wood was a very, very expensive. In fact, uh, a lot of ships that were, that, that were uh, crashed against the, the surf they would recycle that wood to build new ships. So literally a ship would have both new wood and old wood put together. So mm-hmm. from an archaeology, you can sort of guesstimate, you know, it may not be literally and accurately, um, but you can sort of guess uh, what, what, what would have been happened. Would it, would it be literal and say, yes, this is exactly what it did? No. But on the other hand, you could sort of say, hey, this is possibly, possibly, probably what he was doing at the time. Um, so anyway, from an archaeological standpoint, it, it's well documented what, what he would be doing. Um, but the interesting thing is when I found out about that, that's when I started, you know, with the talent perspective and that's when I started researching and I literally took my, my uh, what I would turn my Christian glasses off and said, okay, what does the Bible say? Uh, and that's when I, I'm doing research and finding things and saying, wow, there's some stuff that as you indicated there's stuff that we aren't even talking about and to give you one example um for instance the tithe uh i've always heard about giving tithes giving tithes you know tithe of the church and tithe of the offering well the hebrew word for tithe is a payment of a tenth Mm -hmm. as well as temper as what we refer to ten percent well i found out that there are there in deuteronomy uh 14 there are three ties, and, and I could go into all the others, but I'm just just generically talking about it. Okay, mm-hmm. the first tie, ten percent, went to God, and in most cases, it was the nation of Israel. So it was given to the Levites, who were, did not get an inheritance. The eleven tribes got the land of inheritance; the Levite tribe did not. So what did they get? They got the ten percent from the the nation of Israel to for their living wages. And then they would in turn give 10% to God. But what's interesting in, in Deuteronomy 22 or 14, 22 through 26, it says, Oh, here's the second tithe. And I went, the Second tithe. Okay. I understand the second tithe. But then I'm reading it. I'm going, it says, Okay, convert what your, 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 your growth, your produce, get what you produced in general, whether it's, you know, dates or olives or whatever. Convert that to money if God wants to have a party with you and, and go buy meat and strong drink and wine. And I went, wait a minute. When was the last time I heard that I was supposed to have a party with God? And there it was. In Deuteronomy 22 or 14, 22 through 26, it says, God says, have a party with 10%. And I went, wow. I, and a number of Christian friends, I didn't know that either. So it's like, okay, I can enjoy the fruits of my labor. And so that literally took the, the, the poverty mindset off of me and say, okay, what does that mean, you know, from a, from a business perspective? Now, here's taking them a step further. A tithe is 10%. Okay. How do you find out 10%? In order to find out 10%, you have to find out 100%. In order to find out 100%, you have to count the blessings God has given you. And in most cases, when you're talking about, you know, um, the first fruits, you're talking about um, bushels of dates and bushels of, of, of olives and stuff, you count how many bushels you have. So in order to find out God's 10%, you have to count your blessings or the 100% that 
to find out God's 10%, which also means your 10% to have a party with God. So here I'm reading this and I'm going, here's budgeting <laughs> within the Bible. Mm-hmm. I'm going, wow, I've never thought about that. And I've never considered that, that, that the tithe, while it's the 10%, we're talking budgeting and figuring out what your temp, your hundred percent is, so God can have uh, this ten percent. So it's right there in black and white. So it's been fascinating uh, discussing and enlightening uh, others uh, regarding um, um, the discussion of biblical entrepreneurship and the, the, what I'm finding within the church as a whole that. I've asked a number of pastors about, you know, discussing entrepreneurship and most of them are, you know, get glassy eyed and mm-hmm. you know, they don't want to talk about it. They want to think about it. You know, they're concerned about the church. And then I talk to businesses and I say, well, how much do you know about the Bible concerning your business? And they go, well, I'm just doing business. And then I found out about oh, a year ago that there are over 2000 verses in the Bible concerning money. In the marketplace. And I went, okay, I barely know the Ten Commandments. <laughs> here's 2,000 other verses that I need to learn. And so it's about God saying, here's how you should or should not handle money. Um, and that's when, you know, like the parable of talents, I realized that the two slaves actually doubled their investment and they were promoted. That means it's okay to earn money. And it's mm-hmm. okay to have a profit. Um, there's a, in, in my third book, uh, I found out that there's a Catholic nun who it took over um, uh, a hospital system. It was like $3 billion worth in 17 hospitals. And she had a rather unique phrase. She says, no margin, no mission. So in other words, if you're not earning any money, then the church can't be fed. And so that made a significant impact to me. And in my other research, I found out about the tribes of Issachar and Zebulun. And Issachar and Zebulun uh, were two uh, sons uh, in of the 12 tribes. And they were the two sons. But when you normally give um, a sequence of births, it's always the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, all the way through 12. But with Issachar and Zebulun, the birth order is reversed. And because the way the birth order is reversed, it's rather interesting why they're reversed. Issachar uh, was a tribe that was right next to the Sea of Galilee on the western side of the Sea of the Galilee. Um, Zebulun were the merchants, and they were on the trade routes between the Sea of Galilee and the Mediterranean Sea. Issachar were the educators and the government officials. Zebulun was the tribe of merchants. Well, here is the way they had a symbiotic relationship. Issachar taught from the Torah or from the Bible biblical business or biblical entrepreneurship. And then Zebulun applied it within the marketplace. What's interesting is that as Zebulun prospered, they paid 10% to Issachar. So as Issachar gave good information to Zebulun, Zebulun prospered and paid Issachar. But guess what? If there was poverty, they gave wrong information from Issachar to Zebulun. Guess what? Issachar didn't make as much money. So basically, as both uh, both tribes prospered or poverty, that's the way it worked. So that's fascinating to see that. And what's rather interesting, the two tribes, guess what's in the center in between these two tribes? Where Jesus lived. Jesus lived right in the middle of this entrepreneurial class that was in the Galilee area, in the Judah area. Mm. So, Okay. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Where's that scratch noise? <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. Um, so, I, I got a question. Go for it. Go All for right. It. I uh, Listening to what you said, it sounded like uh, you said uh, you knew Jesus at 14. Yes, yeah, sir. So what was that 
about? How um, it- how did that happen? Yeah. Uh, my father was coming home from a, a sales trip and a person in front of him turned around and said, I'm going to a, a Jesus kind of full gospel businessman association. So they in, uh, invited my dad and my family. Uh, we went there on a, on a Saturday, all day Saturday, or excuse me, a Friday night. And, uh, uh, my, my grandparents went with us. So I said, do you want to stay? And I said, sure, I'll stay. I'll listen. My grandparents left. My parents said, oh, we'll come back and pick you up. I said, okay. And so they gave an altar call. And so I turned to the lady next to me and said, what should I do? She says, it's your choice. So I went up and gave my life at age 14, gave my life to Christ. Uh, and been a Christian ever since and had you know, normal ups and downs of anybody, anybody mm-hmm. Christian, good, yeah. bad, and different, uh, suffering this and successful with that. And so lots of ups and downs. And oh, the, the interesting thing is when I, uh, uh, my, after my dad had passed away, this is sort of relates to it. Um, you know, being on empty. I mean, literally motivational, emotionally, spiritually, just on empty. Um, and I had met with uh, Jimmy, uh, and we had uh, brought a men, men's conference. And his friend Mike came up and looked at me with this dread on his face. And he says, uh, you know, my wife, Stephanie, has breast cancer. I went, oh, that's so sad. And so, you know, we prayed for him, et cetera. Well, Monday morning, as I was going through my list of prayers, I stopped at Mike and Stephanie and the little girl um, and was praying for it. And immediately I got an image from God about holding one lone mustard seed in between my thumb and my index finger and holding it so tight that my fingers were white. And it was as if God took me back to that low period of time frame. He says, this is what you were going through and this is what you were doing. And he says, I had to take you out of that and bring you out so that you can see the full effect of of your growth during that time frame. And so that lone mustard seed in my two fingers is what kept me going through, even though I, it, 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 it stunk. It sucks. <laughs> um, <laughs> that one lone mustard seed of faith is what kept me going. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Power oh. pack thirty minutes, man. <laughs> yeah, I've, le- I've learned quite a bit. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, um, that's why I say I can keep going, but I want to give you guys a breathing moment there. <laughs> yeah, um, I would say you know a lot of the times when we hear testimony, and everything else, it's kind of you know uh, what was your two by four upside the head, as uh, I've right. been calling it, and right. it sounds like you were in a spot when uh, you get out of the service. Uh, yeah. And to, before you go any further, I just want to say that uh, my uh, son, uh, Junior, uh, who was in the Air Force, and I think he worked on DC-10s. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for your service. Yeah, and thank you for yours. We didn't uh, get to properly do that. Thank yes, you for your thank service. You so much. Very much. Oh, that's I want to say hello to Miss Tracy Fagan, who's on with us live to, right now. Oh, awesome. She just dialed in, and uh, we've been having a good time with Kevin. <laughs> thank you, Tracy. We appreciate it. Yes, Tracy. Absolutely. Thank you. Kevin is schooling us. <laughs> he really I'm is. I'm sharing as much as possible. I will never think about the talent the same again. I, you just think a talent and, you know, you think maybe what, a yeah. hundred bucks or something like that, you know? Yeah. You, you know, something. I don't know. I just always thought of a coin, yeah, you know? Yeah, I just small. Yeah, exactly. I never really Not thought of it. 220 pounds of gold. Right. And, and what's rather interesting is and I've got a 30 year old Bible here and literally about two months ago, I found the weight measures and they said a common talent was 75 pounds. A royal talent was 150 pounds. And so it's like, ooh, that even changes it differently because talents are only mentioned in the book of Matthew and book of Matthew's theme is kingship. I have a really, really old King James Bible that's been passed down in my family. I am going to look to see if there is the weights and measures. Yeah, how interesting is that? And you said it was in Matthew. And what was Matthew? Well, yeah, Matthew Matthew twenty five fourteen through thirty is the the parable of the talents. Because actually, I'm reading Uh, that right now. Yeah, yeah. But you know, you're talking about that and money. 
And um, Matthew, who is the author, uh, what did he do? Oh, boy. <laughs> Uh, that I don't know on the top of my head. I, I he was a tax collector, what, wasn't he? Ah, there we go. Yeah, he was oh, tax collector. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yes. Yes. Not very lucky so, yeah. from what I understand. Yeah. The, the tax collectors are not. No, no, no. They got, they got a, they got a, a, a piece of the action of what the taxes they collect. And they always, they were, they, they were the lowest of low from the Jews from what I've understood. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was, it was not a fun time. So a talent really. Kind of wasn't a coin. No. That thing was a stone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it actually shows the stone when you yeah, look it t- up. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it shows the stone. How about that? Uh, it says 6,000 drachma. You look in your Google Bible? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. And, 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 you know, when, when I found out about the talent, it, it, it just, I can't believe this. And I've talked to a friend, a lot of my Jewish friends, and they, they don't know that either. Uh, and so, it's, and, and it puts things in perspective, you know, that it's 28 in today's dollar to $28 million, mm-hmm. you know, and oh, so, great. But, and, and to, to put that in perspective is, um, there's a company up in the Northwest called Barnhart Train and Rigging. And this is why it, it's, it sort of broke the, the shackles of my brain because, Barnhart Train and Rigging, uh, two of the guys that bought it from their parents, there was only 10 employees at the time, but they basically said, God, this is your business. We're going to let you lead and we're going to build the business as you see fit. They grew 25% every year for 23 years wow. to create to create a $250 million business able to give away a million dollars a month to ministries. Hmm. Wow. And so those things we don't hear. We always hear sort of the poverty and sure. struggling, you know, ministry, well, sure. but not something like that. So it, it, you know, it sort of told me that there are certain people that have the gift for business. Their talents are those things mm-hmm. in running business and being successful business. So why would we force them to go into to the ministry when that's their talent? It's like telling, telling the kidney it has to be a stomach or, or, a liver, you know, it, it's out of where it's supposed to be. Uh, so it's like, okay, what are my talent? What are my physical talents? What's my spiritual gifts? My gift in this? And how do I go do it? How do I go buy it in the marketplace? Man, you could, uh, you could kind of use the, that thing about the, the physical talent to your God given talent. It's Absolutely. big. It's huge. Absolutely. And it's worth right. a stinking lot. Yeah, really. But yeah. again, you just, I'm just, I just read that like a night or two ago because I'm in Matthew tw- and I'm at the 26, I think, or 27. And, um, you, you, you just gloss over because it, it says a talent. And, you know, you're thinking like, yeah, a coin. Said a coin. Yeah. Right. Like a 50 cent piece or something. Well, I would think it would be a <laughs> bit more than that, but no, but the size of it, I mean, right. And you just gloss over because, oh, it's five talents, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, you yeah. know, like yeah. a big it, boulder or stone, yeah. you know, well, God. <laughs> God, God's given us all gifts that are mm-hmm. big boulders right. and worth millions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, 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 and to me, when, when I look at, you know, uh, there's a rather interesting, um, um, uh, test you could take called the strength finder test, um, that I took and my wife has taken it and nailed what I love to do. And the top five things, I always do those things day in and day out. My wife does her top five things day in and day out. But then I found out that, you know, when, you know, we're the body of Christ. And if we're the body of Christ, then Fritz is the eye and Mike is the ear and Tina is, uh, the tongue and I'm the stomach, you know, but guess what? We all have to work together. Mm-hmm. It's not, you know, I, I can't, I can't sit there and say stomach. I don't need you, you know, or I don't need you. We all are needed within the body. Amen. Uh, and, and, What's rather interesting that, you know, along with this, uh, you know, talent perspective and we're the body of Christ. Well, what feeds the body of Christ, i.e., what feeds the eye and the ear? Well, the blood feeds all the cells in the body. Mm -hmm. Mm. And so I'm going, okay, the blood feeds all the cells in the body. Feel the liver and I'm the liver. So the blood feeds me. So then I went, well, what does the blood do? Well, the blood is a carrier. And then it has two components to the blood. It takes 
oxygen and it takes nutrients to all the cells. And I went, that's it. The blood is Jesus Christ. The nutrients are God the Father and the oxygen is the Holy Spirit. It touches every cell within the body. If I don't have blood flowing, guess what? The cells die. Mm -hmm. And I went, wow, what a way to look at the body of Christ is while we're separate and giftedness, the body of Christ is connected with the Holy Spirit and with God, the Father and God, the Son all together. And that's the unity that brings us all together. So it's like, whoa, talk about, oh, oh, it feeds us oxygen and nutrients. And what does it do? It takes away the waste and takes away the carbon dioxide too. So we're growing and we're developing as the body of Christ, getting better and bigger all the time. Amen. Wow. Well, I enjoyed this. <laughs> I'm glad. It was I'm different. Glad. That's for sure. Kevin, you, you got to <laughs> promise you'll stop by for a part two, man. We'll pick up from oh, where absolutely. we left off. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely will. I got, I've got plenty of stuff to talk about and, and I got <laughs> more I can, I can discuss. So, Whatever fits into into what God is leading and where He's leading us, uh, all the more better I can do that. Cool. We've just enjoyed uh, getting to know you. A history lesson. Yeah, and got a history lesson to boot. No extra charge. Yeah. <laughs> a, little, a little bit above a Bible study for you. Right. Really, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to have to go back and read that talent story again with a new, boy. You're not kidding. A new vision in mind. I'm rethinking everything. Yeah, it's oh, an yeah. eighty-pound oh, yeah. rock. Not oh my a gosh, that not was a, a coin that you slip in your pocket. No, that was a mind blow right there. You know, <laughs> and I'm over here doing the parody. You know, well, God gave you the talent to play drums. It's big and it's heavy and it's good and it's worth a lot. And that's yeah. just, uh, man, God gave you a God lot is, of talent. God is just good, saying. man. Oh, and, ima- and imagine the one slave buried it. Hmm. Ima- imagine. Imagine a Christian in the church who has a talent that's buried. Their their physical talent or the spiritual gift is buried. I think a lot of people do that, though. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I think uh, a I lot of it. people I'm bury guilty. their talents. Mm-hmm. I, I, imagine, imagine if all the church found out what all, all the members of a church found out what all their talents are and they began putting them to use. Wow. And, and uh-huh. what, what would that look like with the Holy Spirit guiding us with love and peace and joy? guiding us. I mean, one of the things I did was one of the churches south of here um, it has a coffee shop in there. And I said, when's the coffee shop open? Well, it's only open on Sunday. I said, really? I said, what about Monday through Saturday? Oh, no, it's closed. And so... That's a shame. You know, I, yeah. And I said, well, have you ever heard about co-working? I said, what's that? Oh, that's, that's where you get together and you have a central location where you have whiteboards on the wall and coffee and and, uh, you know, snacks and lunches and breakfasts. And that's where you all work together, you know, bring in your laptops and have classes and stuff. I said, you could do that in the church. I said, imagine Tuesday through Saturday, everybody's being taught on biblical entrepreneurship. You're learning the Bible and you're learning business all at the same time. So now you got the woman who's a foodie who sits there, loves to use the kitchen that's in the church. In most cases, it is coded for a commercial kitchen. She's using the church's kitchen to create meals for everybody to eat, to have a um, lunch or, or a conference there, uh, you know, or, you know, bring in cookies, you know, a teenager wants to, you know, bake cookies, you know, or a kid from high school wants to learn how to code. And imagine a whole Bible ecosystem within a church where everybody's learning all biblical entrepreneurship. And then now, Everybody's earning more money and serving their community. Uh, in fact, there's a, a church down the road here that literally bought a strip mall and installed Christian businesses all in the strip mall as a way of influencing their community. That's a wow. cool idea. That's why God gave us coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you know, where it's it's terrible if we don't utilize it. Uh-huh. Yeah, absolutely. And as absolutely. You, as you were talking about that, uh, that last... Uh, servant there with the ta- the talent that buried it and how does the last sentence go it's thrown into the darkness where there was weeping and gnashing of teeth mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so the encouragement is for everybody within the church 
to find out what their talents are, what specific strengths they have. When I say strengths, and there's two questions I recommend to everybody getting a business. One is find out what your giftedness is. Giftedness is what's your strengths, physical talents. In other words, are you good at singing? Are you good at math? Are you good at um, architecture, dancing, music? What are you good at? And then who do you serve? Because in most cases, when you serve somebody, and that's the biggest factor, Mm -hmm. when you take your strength, you find somebody who is weak in that. And then when they're weakened, like if you were an accountant and you serve somebody who hates accounting and they're pleased by what you do, guess what? You've raised both of you. You get the, the, the accolades and the glory from God by doing what God has called you to do. And you've served somebody who is pleased by what you've done. So now both of you have joy because you're both doing what God has called you to do. That is fantastic. Wow, what a nugget to close the show, huh? <laughs> yeah. That was amazing. Hey, uh, Kevin, we're home of the shameless plug here. So if somebody wanted okay. to get one of your books, how can they do that? Just go to Amazon.com. Uh, you can search my name. That's too easy. Uh, on there. Uh, AF Churches, and that's part of why I wrote it, is I have uh, the newest book, Wisdom Work Wealth, um, is written, co-authored with 13 other authors. Um from a retired Navy SEAL to four pastors to three minorities to a widow who wanted to start her own business but felt like her husband was subsidizing her. And then four months later, her husband passed away from a heart attack. And so now she's on her own. So it's intended to encourage the church, all the church to buy it, the pastors and all the people within the church buy it, start reading short chapters, four to six pages each on the wisdom book. Uh, read it, start discussing it, and start a biblical entrepreneurship ecosystem within the church. And let's get moving, converting, converting people out in the marketplace to Christ mm-hmm. and then bringing them and expanding their talents and physical giftedness. Well, amen to that. I got to get you hooked cool. up with Dennis Huff too on uh, Conquering Business Giants. He is going to, uh, I'm going to tell him to listen to this first so he's ready for you. Sure. <laughs> uh, Dennis, I think we already connected. Yeah, I think them. they did. Uh, but um, Dennis is going to be uh, pretty excited good, once good, he hears good. this. So. Well, it's that's last, great. Last frontier. Last frontier for sure. Amen to that. Amen to that. Well, hey, if you'd like to be a guest on the show, contact us at God Stories Radio, Tina at gmail.com. If you'd like any more information on today's uh podcast god stories radio at gmail.com or you know what else can they do mikey they can tweet us they can tweet us on the twitter like us on facebook uh www.godstoriesradio.com and it is tax time so yes it if, is if the lord uh so pricks your heart or you uh, are inclined there is a, a paypal button on the front of the website you can just give her a push and you can uh tax free uh or 501c3 and Every little bit helps. Yes, it does. Because you're going to the tax man tomorrow. Well, yes, I am. And we're incorporated and we got to file like the big boys. So that's that's just the way it goes. But we're too blessed to be stressed. <laughs> that's us. So, <laughs> right. Any closing thoughts there, Mikey? Tina? Wow. No, just thank you for your time. I appreciate you being on the show and, <laughs> and sharing your talent. Yeah, really. History lesson. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot more nuggets that uh, we have barely scratched the surface on digging up. So uh, we need a lot more people to do to to do the digging besides myself. Mm-hmm. Amen to that. Amen to that. All right. Amen. We appreciate you hanging out with us, and uh, that about wraps it up for session two seventy. I'm Fritz. I'm Mike. And I'm Tina. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless.